I just noticed that you wrote in the script. Yeah. Tits up. Tits up. <laughs> yep. Oh my God. I love that show. I was going <laughs> to write it last week, but I was like, oh, she's got a lot of notes and I don't know if she would like that. And then this, this week I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. She'll like it. So I wrote tits, up. <laughs> tits up. Oh, I love that show so much. Okay. Should we do our countdown? So yeah, let's do our countdown. I have to, I have to readjust my legs. I have to be sitting on my. Okay. I know we probably talked about this before and I feel really bad, but when did you go back to blonde? Oh, um, it has to be about a month now God because I've colored it now three times <laughs> and you could, you have to wait two weeks in between. Oh no, I didn't oh. wait two weeks in between the first one. Okay. And look how weird my skin looks today. Why am I so pink? It doesn't look weird. It's weird. Uh-uh. Well, I was out. I think I have sunburn. I think uh -oh. that's what it is. Um, sunburn. Yeah. So I I colored it. What what I did first is I took like some way back here. Mm -hmm. Took a curl Tester. way back there. And it didn't look hardly any different. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, well, whatever. I'll do it. And then it came out this white. And I'm like. You should, I took a video of myself taking the cap off <laughs> and I was like, holy shit. And I'm like, well, whatever. I mean, worst case scenario, I'll shave my head. So, um, but then I there feel was like, you could have done something else. Other probably than, like, something else in between. Yeah. yeah. I kept saying, just go get it done. I'm like, that's like $300. I'm not doing yeah. that. Yeah. I don't have a job. I can't do that. Does he understand how expensive it is? No, because yeah. he's bald. He right. doesn't. He doesn't have to deal yeah. with that. No, that, yeah, that would be like $300. Yeah. yeah. Without the tip. Right. Right. So I, uh, so I just bought another color because mm -hmm. there were some parts I missed and I did mm -hmm. it myself. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, I missed like, the, like there was a section here and on this side too, that came out more red, mm -hmm. like hot, they call it. So I, um, I just wanted to do, get the, get that part like evened out. Yeah. And so I only waited a few days and did it again. And it didn't take because mm -hmm. your hair needs to rest for yeah. two weeks in between. So after that, I let it rest two weeks and I did it one more time on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I have to wait another week and a half before I can do what I, what I wanted. My, my plan was to get it as light as possible mm -hmm. and then pick a darker blonde Mm -hmm. to have it be the actual color yeah yeah because i couldn't get it to go to a lighter color than it already was without going blonde 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 yeah. first right so basically that's 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 what i did so okay we'll see i was thinking well i used to have platinum hair and i liked it mm -hmm. but then i after waiting two weeks to do this again my roots grow so fast mm -hmm. and it looked i looked like madonna in the 80s and it wasn't good it's not good just get the cone bra it's okay yeah <laughs> yeah wasn't my favorite so um i'm just i'll have to figure out what kind of a blonde i want i found a lady on tiktok yesterday that had mm -hmm. the color i like so i did a screenshot oh, nice so yeah there you go hello friends and welcome to the activity continues podcast we are your hosts i'm megan and i'm amy we discuss episodes of the Travel Channel's TV show, The Dead Files, and tonight, Amy will be recapping Feeding the Fire, which is from season seven and is episode 11 on Discovery+. Plus. Um, so, Amy, why did you pick this episode? I chose this one because it was another one of those ones that I had seen way back. Well, I guess not that far back, um, but I... Way back, you know. I mean, seven. I think it, this one came out, I believe, in 2017. Okay. <clears throat> so um, I probably, though, watched it, you know, in 2019 when I discovered the show. Mm -hmm. And anyway, um, it was one of those ones where at the reveal, I was like, ooh. <laughs> so uh, I, I made a note and I was like, I got to watch that one again. And so then I went back and I'm like, yeah, yeah, we're going to pull that one out. Mm hmm and dust um, her off. yeah dust it off and go over it and i watched it again i waited i'm so dumb i waited until yesterday to watch it again oh, so you pulled a megan because I, i'm yes, usually I like amy's like okay we're gonna record at 4 30 and i'm like <laughs> yep and i'm just finishing my notes at 4 29 
I was still writing my notes at four o'clock when I texted you and I was like, well, I'm finally ready if you want to start early. Um, I was like, you're so funny. I'm in badness heights right now, so I can't. <laughs> I didn't know what you were doing, but it was fine. I don't care. So, um, yeah, I, I, I watched it and there were mm -hmm. so many stories, like mm -hmm. adjacent stories, which you'll see in a minute. But um, so I'm like, now I got to research that one. Oh, I want to find out what happened in that murder. And so I'm like all over the place. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I probably could have done more if I'd given myself a little bit more time as far as like backstory and researching stuff, but you know, I didn't. So you know what it is, what it is. It is and, what it is. Uh, <clears throat> and I think it'll, I think it'll still be interesting. So there's a little bit of a content warning on this mm -hmm. one. Um, it's there's mm -hmm. talk about of sexual abuse and assault, um, both paranormal and real in history. And then there's a pretty graphic murder and alcoholism. And there is a mention of child death in history, no details. Okay. Good. But first, first we'll gab a little bit. Um, speaking of gabbing, yeah. I started watching or I finished Our Father on Netflix. Our Father. The one about the, the infertility cult. doctor. Oh, who oh, impregnated oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Yep. All these women. Oh my God. I just, I, I just, I, they they found 96 siblings spoiler <gasps> alert they're up to 96 and counting wow. and they were like the one of the siblings who kind of started this all recorded some conversations with him mm -hmm. he is a narcissist and a half oh, like, of course. obviously he is he impregnated women against their consent with his sperm Jesus. but um you know she was telling her about how his marriage will be ruined if this comes out and his <laughs> status in the church will be ruined because he's an elder, because of course he is. Course. And then it comes out that he might be part of this cult called Quiverful, which oh. there's a like a verse or a mention in the Bible that um, men should have a quiver full of children. And that's where it comes from. And essentially... Yes. It's like the handmaiden's tale where the mm. only purpose women serve are to breed. Yeah. And they think he's part of that cult. And it's just, they found 44 other doctors who had done the same thing. Oh, my God. And the shitty part is there's no crime. They yeah. can't, they can't. They can't charge him with a crime. What what crime would he be? Well, I they guess they went it, to him to get pregnant. They got pregnant. But didn't they pick their sperm donor? They did, yeah. So it would be false and, advertising or bait and switch or whatever. And some of them were even, he was supposed to have used the the husband's sperm. Oh, Like the no. husband brought in a sample uh -huh. of his own sperm to uh -huh. inject into his wife because they were having trouble conceiving naturally. Sure. And so he didn't do that. Oh, gross. It's so, you guys, if you don't, if you haven't watched it or you don't have um, or you have Netflix, you need to watch it mm -hmm. because it is so good. It's an hour and a half long and they interview several of the siblings and oh. you, your heart and some of the moms, too. And your heart just bleeds for them. Oh, I can only imagine. That would make me angry, I think. Oh, I got really mad. Yeah. I texted you about it. But. Yeah. You were like, so we have a cult. And I was like, really? I know. I and thought like, we had a cult. No. I was like, I was about to get t-shirts made it's, and everything. It's, it's coming. It, the okay. cult is probably like in progress for okay. us. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. I mean, cool, cool, cool. give it time to ramp up, baby. We've yeah. only been doing well, this I'm, for 18 I'm, episodes. Excited. <laughs> <laughs> Call to arms, form our cult. Yeah. <laughs> we'll gossip and drink and talk about ghosts. <laughs> I'm in. And you don't have to you know, get rid of your family or anything no. like that. You can still. You don't have to give us money. No. You don't have to get rid of your family. You don't right. have to move into a weird area away from your right friends or family. Right. I, I literally see no bad, no no I, downside. It sounds to this. great to me. Yeah. To be fair, we are pretty much in that cult. <laughs> kind of, yeah. It just doesn't have a name, I guess. <laughs> we'll think of one. But yeah. You guys, anybody has any uh, suggestions for cult name? Us Hit know. us up. <laughs> um, also, we got a really, really nice review on Facebook. Yes. From one of my friends, Amber. Yeah. 
than Amy, but you know, Amy, she leaves us reviews. She's yeah. the best. She's like our number one fan. <laughs> she, she should get a t-shirt. She definitely should get a t-shirt. She should get a t-shirt. Number one fan. Oh, with speaking a big of big old picture of our faces. <laughs> speaking of t-shirts, we did do, I'll get we'll go back to Amber and you can read her review, but I just before I forget. Um I did do um an Instagram ask people to vote mm -hmm. on a t-shirt. And the most of the votes were not for the one you like the best or for the one I like the best. <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, I guess but, we don't have taste. I guess not. But that doesn't matter because I'm still the boss. So I made a I made the t-shirt design of the one that you liked, but I mm -hmm. fixed it up a little. Remember, I think I was sending yep. you copies back and forth. With yeah. like new headphones and yeah, stuff. Yeah, new head I put different headphones and different fonts and all that stuff. So um I had I had a t-shirt made for each of us. Yeah. So those are coming. And as soon as they're here, I'll get get it to you. Photo and, up. and then yeah, and then we can wear them. Yes. They should everywhere. be here by the time we record next time. So I'm gonna wear it everywhere. I'm gonna get yeah. written up at work for uh, <laughs> for wearing a graphic tee. Yeah, for wearing uh, what is the word I'm looking for for dress code violation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll be like, "Can you please wash that? It's yellow and it started off white." <laughs> well, it's no. a black T-shirt, so nobody oh, will know. Perfect. Yeah. Oh my god, it'll hide all my pit stains. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we will show those to you guys, and if you want to order them, we will figure out a way for you to do that. Yes. I just ordered them off Canva, so. Oh, nice. I just ordered them for us. And I don't know. I don't know if other people can order my shirt off Canva. I don't know how that works. We'll figure it out. Anyway, we'll figure back, it. back to Amber. Yes. So Amber, one of my good, good friends, um, her review was, and I quote, <laughs> I mostly laugh my ass off. Five stars. Highly recommend. Yay. End quote. <laughs> Thanks, Amber. To which I say we need to work on it because she needs to fully laugh her ass off. Yeah. Not mostly. Must, not but mostly. That's, yeah. that's on us. That's right. on us. Right, right, right. So thank right. you for that, Amber. She's the best. Yeah. She's the one that wrote in her her story. Yeah. About her with daughter. Her daughter. Yeah. Ooh, creepy. Ooh, I think that was Ooh. last. Was that not last episode? Maybe the one before. The one before. If y'all are looking for it, I think it was two episodes ago. Yeah. So that would have been number six. Not the Lizzie Borden house. Right. The one before that, yeah. which I don't remember. The Velisca. No. No, there was one in between. I don't know. Oh, here, I'll tell this you. This is why Amy's in charge because so I have little note cards oh, look, for everyone. She is on it. Oh. For those young kids who don't know, these note cards are what we used to take notes on in <laughs> school before we had <laughs> smartphones and laptops in every class. Yeah. Um, so before Lucy, the landowner, that was the one I did with the guy that was reincarnated. Yeah. Oh, that one was so good. That was a, you should watch that episode if you haven't. That's yeah. a good one. And then we did Lizzie Borden. And then the card that I made for the one today is all wrong because I was going <laughs> to do a different one. And I changed my mind. <laughs> and um, all wrong. Yeah, it was all wrong. So this is crap. I she throws I, it away. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it before. We'll do it again. Do it again. <laughs> So I have to tell you about, I had this weird thing happen oh, that was like, me. I call it like a glitch in the matrix. You have a lot of matrix I glitches. I do have, I do. So this one, this was on Tuesday night. Um, it was beautiful outside. Mm -hmm. We were going to do our Zoom happy hour that we do mm -hmm. with our friends every Tuesday night. Yep. We were going to do that outside. And so I had the computer out there and we were setting up the picnic table for the first time. And we have, it's a round picnic table and there's four benches that go around it. Yep. And a friend of ours made us cushions for them. Aww. So I went and got the cushions out of the back. Is that Greg Melissa? Was, no, um, her name's Christine. Oh. And she's a customer. She works on like what TV shows and movies okay. and stuff. That's the coolest job in the yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah. She's got some great stories. I'll tell oh you. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so I can sure tell you any of them. But... Making a bench is probably like the easiest thing. She's, she could probably do it in she, her sleep. She banged it out in an afternoon. Yeah. yeah. It was. Yeah. But I just gave her that. the, I gave her the material. She went and got the, the padding for the inside and she mm -hmm. put it together and brought it over. Wow. Middle of COVID. It was really nice. 
Anyway, so I went and got the cushions. Greg is going out to the garage and he's pulling out the benches and setting them down. He pulled out one. He set it down. I was putting the cover on it, pulled out another one. I put the cover on that one. So two of them had the covers on them. I went back in for some reason. I can't remember. I went back in the house. And when I came back out, I was looking around and I'm like, why are there three covers sitting or the bench cushions sitting on top of the thing? And I said, I know that I already put two of the covers on two of the benches. And I looked and there was only one bench. Greg was still bringing the other, the second bench in. Did you talk to him about it? Yeah. And he's like, no, I just, I, I, I haven't even set that bench down yet. And I'm like, no, I put the cushion on it because I was wrapping the cushion around it and looking yeah. at the other one that was already done. And I'm like, oh, uh-huh. I'm half done. Yeah. <gasps> and he's like, no, I never even brought that one out. This is it right here. Yeah. I haven't brought it out yet. Oh my God. I know. That's freaky. It was really freaky. Freaky. Yeah. I, if anyone You have a lot of glitches. Stuff. You're, yeah, you have I a do, lot. I have things like that. Like I had another one last couple summers ago where again about going outside <laughs> maybe our patio is haunted or maybe something the but... world is trying to tell you to stay in <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right um but i had i had looked at the the uh the echo show the you know the alexa thing yep and it said it was like i can't remember the details i think it said it was 245 or something like that mm-hmm. and I, did I lose time or did I gain time? At any rate, I went outside. I was doing something like putting the the picnic Cushions table together or benches. something. Yeah, something like that. And then I came back and, and I had music on. Mm-hmm. And I know I'd heard at least three songs. Mm-hmm. And the songs okay. are like three to five minutes, three right? Minutes. I can yep. even so name you the songs that I heard. 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah. And I came back in and it was only, it only, the clock had only advanced like two minutes and it's not like a clock hanging on the wall. It's the, it's the Alexa. Yeah. Oh my God. So I don't know what happened there. That was super weird. That's freaky. I know. I know. All right. So um, I do want to mention that we have two more podcasts that we're promoting this week. And podcast promotion. Yeah. Do, 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 do. And one of the first one is called Haunted Housewives and Mm -hmm. two women, Carly and Tara. And they talk about crew time. What did they talk about? Crew (laughs) time. Crew time. Yep. Crew time. Yep. Uh, True crime. (laughs) Or true crime. Or true crime. Tomato, tomato. Yeah. (laughs) Potato, (laughs) potato. Um, Oh my God. I could love a fucking potato right now. That sounds good. Cheesy potatoes. I had potatoes for brunch. Oh we went out to brunch. Where'd you go? Amore. Oh, your are Amore. Fate. And we brought Vivi and she got to see all her friends. Oh, she's yeah. such a social butterfly. I know. She's so cute. Uh, Vivi is my dog, by the way. Those of you who don't know Vivian that. Pickles is her full name for yep. when she's a naughty, naughty girl. <laughs> I think I called her Vivian Ann Pickles once when I was mad at her, but I don't know where the Ann came from. She just needed a middle name. You know, <laughs> when you're in trouble, you need a middle name. So these ladies are mediums. They're both mediums. And so cool. Carly does the research and she uses tarot cards Mm -hmm. to help figure out like how to tell the story. And Tara's mediumship is more like she speaks to loved ones who have passed. So the description is two housewives using mediumship and tarot while talking about crimes, mysteries, things that go bump in the night and other creepy shit before dinner time. Nice. And then the other one is the nightcap. Okay. So this one, his voice is really, really creepy. It's kind of distorted. So maybe don't listen to this at night if you're like me and can't listen to anything remotely scary at night. Um, And I mean, aside from the actual episodes, the promo alone is scary. So the promo goes and quote. You have stumbled into a dimension that is neither of this reality or in this reality. Your presence has not gone unnoticed, having attracted entities both malevolent and benevolent. Luckily, you have run into me first, a humble storyteller of everything strange and sinister. Grab a seat and join me, won't you? 
Make yourself comfortable while I stimulate your mind because you will be here a while. Sorry, did I forget to mention that you can never leave? You are the newest victim of the world that is the nightcap. <laughs> that was really good. Oh, thanks. So um, I would suggest listening to that on like 10 a.m. on like a mm-hmm. Wednesday in yep. the sun. <laughs> yeah, it's it's creepy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you'll hear that in the uh, in the break when we do a, a little break. A little break. A little um, break. Is there anything else we need to go over? Anything I, else we should talk about? Uh, I don't even know. I, I mean, probably, but nothing I can think of. So, <laughs> okay. I mean, I think we're good. Okay. Let's hop into it. Hi, I'm Carly. And I'm Tara. And we are the Haunted Housewives. If you enjoy tales of sexy Mothman, historical hauntings, dark humor, and the macabre, then tune in wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Stay your barefoot and haunted. So this episode is called Feeding the Fire. It's season seven, episode 11 on Discovery+. Plus. I have no idea what it is on anything else. It originally aired March 4th, 2017. And like I said, I chose this one because I had made a note of it a long Mm -hmm. time ago. And also I had originally asked Alexa to give me numbers, like number between one and 13. And and, and, uh, he, she, my Alexa's got a male voice. He kept giving me numbers and I'd look and we'd already done the episode. Mm -hmm. One of us had already covered it. So I'm like, screw that. I'll do it myself. Do it myself. Jeez. Yo, boss. So we are in Kaufman, Texas. It's about 40 minutes from Dallas. Texas. Texas. The client is Larry. Now he Ooh, another called- man. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's right. We don't get a lot of those. No, we don't. So he called in because he says the paranormal activity in his house has broken up his marriage and it's now going after his daughters. Oh no. He shows a photo of his wife, Denise, uh-huh. and daughters. Ex- yeah, <laughs> ex-wife, yeah. Well, actually, I don't think that they are divorced. Oh, okay. Maybe they can work it through it then. I hope so. I hope so. So we have his wife, Denise, and then daughters, Chelsea is the youngest, Ashley, the middle, and Brittany, the oldest. So they're the youngest girl is 20, so they're not children. Oh, okay. They're yeah, adults. They're, they're adults adult children that live at the home. So Larry says the paranormal is tearing his family apart, that relationships are going to hell. Mm -hmm. He thinks something wants to take control of the women in the house and to remove all the men. Don't like that. Uh Uh-uh. And they live uh, in one of those like trailer-like houses. It kind of looks like a shipping container or something on the outside, but it's like an actual Mm -hmm. real home inside. Okay. Um, but it's kind of like the one we saw before in that other Texas one that I did with the Ku Klux Klan in the in the forest. Uh-huh, 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 that kind uh-huh. of house. Yep, 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 yep. Ooh, that one was so freaky. That was scary. That was the one where they didn't even want to go out at night, right? Yes. Yep. And they did the reveal outside at the picnic table oh, outside yeah. the house. Yeah, it was creepy. That was Spooky. a good one. That was. Really and I think that was one of the ones that early on, anyway, Amy said mm-hmm. was one of the scariest ones for her. Oh, God. But of course, she's done 57,000 episodes since then. So literally, she probably has another one that's more scary now. Anyway, so Larry's wife asked him to move out and he did, mm-hmm. but he didn't go far. He's living in the adjacent trailer, which is about 20 feet from the trailer the rest of his family lives in. He's so like, fine, I'll move out, but I'm not going far. <laughs> <laughs> fine. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Here I am in my new home. It's 10 so, feet away. <laughs> <laughs> It really, it, they're like, that's, one is sitting like this and one is, they're like, yeah. She's like, that's not what I meant. You know it. I meant get the like, fuck out. He's like, I moved. <laughs> you said move and I moved. And here we are. <laughs> I'm not a mind reader. <laughs> Sorry, I don't need to make fun. I hope they can work it out. I, I really do. I do too. Um, as far as experiences, they are hearing voices, seeing shadows, their physical attacks and health <sighs> issues. He has rheumatoid arthritis, degenerative bone disease, depression, and has had a heart attack. I was just going to say, has he had a heart attack? A heart attack. heart attack. attack. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. We're so funny today, you guys. I want to ask you to look at the picture in the drive. 
I'm You'll trying. See okay, there we go. Oh, okay. Yep, there he is. I see him. Okay. So how old would you say he is, judging by that picture? All right. I'm going to say probably 60, 65. Okay. Um, he, so he's talking about all this stuff that he has going on, right? Mm -hmm. And Steve asks him how old he is. And he says he's 60. Okay. And I wrote in my notes, the dude doesn't look a day over 80. I thought he looked really old. And oh. apparently Steve did too. <laughs> <laughs> because Steve points out that the health issues he has are old people diseases. And also notes that the guy has a walker. And oh, he, asked, he does? Yeah. And he asked him about it. And I didn't notice that he had the walker. He just had, they were sitting outside at a, like a yeah. table. Um, yeah. And he happened to notice it sitting over there. Oh so Steve asked him about the walker and he says that he and his daughter, Ashley, the middle child, mm -hmm. got in an altercation and she kicked him and broke his leg in three places. And Larry thinks that something took over her. Oh and my God. And he says he wants whatever it is gone so they can be a family again. So now we're going to go to uh, Amy. Mm -hmm. She feels depression right away when she walks in there. She says she has a feeling, she gets a feeling that she wants to run away. And then she says she feels that somebody here has really bad knee issues. <laughs> I mean, you could say that. I mean, his leg was broken in three places. I'm assuming one of them was his knee. How, I mean, there's only so many places you can I break know. a leg. Right. The stage being one of them. <laughs> Ah, but I'm here all week, folks. <laughs> Don't forget to tip your weight staff. Tip your weight staff. <laughs> so she sees a woman who is screaming and sees her sees this woman running after a man. She's beating him and it's very <gasps> abusive. And he's running away and she's screaming. And oh Amy says, it's so fucking negative. And now I don't know if this is supposed to be Ashley and her dad, or if this is something else that we'll hear about later. Oh yeah, maybe. I'm not really sure. It could be residual or yeah, ghost. Oof. Yeah. So now uh, we're back to Steve and Larry, and Larry says that he was attacked. They're in the house now, walking around the mm -hmm. house, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he says he was attacked and slapped on the arm while he was sleeping. Oh my he God. ended up with scratches on his belly. And Steve says, there's dogs all over here. Could it be them? <laughs> and I want to know what, what Steve's got about dogs, because he's always trying to blame the dogs for. Which is odd, because he has the cutest puppy. He has so a really cute It's dog. not like he hates dogs. No, I don't know. I'm like, Steve, give the dogs a break, will you? I know. Poor dogs. It could be the dogs. They boozing. Yeah. <laughs> Fozzie got into the fucking the turkey, <laughs> oh, wild turkey. <laughs> Again. Again. He's such a mean drunk. Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> so Larry says he sees shadow figures that are about 10 to 11 feet tall. Ooh, and he feels that some big. of them. I know. They're, the ceiling of the building isn't even that tall. So, okay. So how does he know they're that tall? Then? I don't know. Maybe they're hunched down. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. It's Larry, you know. Fucking Larry. Fucking Just Larry. Just kidding, Larry. Just kidding, Larry. <laughs> hope you worked it out with Denise. I hope so. So um, mm -hmm. I feel someone in the room with him, and he says, I need answers. Something is tearing us apart. Okay. Mm. So sad. Yeah. So on the one hand, like you want it to be true so that, you know, his marriage can be fixed. Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, you're like, well, is he just grasping at this because he doesn't want to accept that his marriage is over? But I, I hope it's not i hope they can work it out and i'm gonna say, take a drink every time i say i hope they can work it out <laughs> you're up to four drinks yep okay so then amy sees an old man creeping about and she thinks that people would feel watched and would see a shadow and i thought this was a funny sound clip so i i did this okay. one he has a creepy mother <laughs> He's a, he a creepy motherfucker. Creepy motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Amy? She is just with the words. I know. Like she she gets to it. I know. I really wish that they didn't have to bleep her. I know. I feel like when you put it on Discovery Plus, I feel like you you don't need to bleep it. Yeah, it's but, probably a TV 
PG-13 or whatever, so they can't. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. Make it R. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put it on HBO. I want to hear all those fucks. All those fucks and shits and yeah. motherfuckers. <laughs> there was a lot of them in this one. Actually. Oh, I'm, oh, okay. From Good. Steve, too. Oh, Steve. He had, I don't want, I'm not going to spoil anything, but he had the best quote at the end. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. So Steve is talking with Denise and asks if she believes that the paranormal broke up her marriage. And she says, no. She says people break up all the time. Not all relationships last. Mm -hmm. She doesn't expand any further on that until much later. Do we know how long they were married? uh, 26 years. (gasps) To be married that long. I mean, I know it happens, but it's just, that's sad. It is. Yeah. So Steve goes, I assume you don't believe in the paranormal. And she goes, oh, no, no, I do. (laughs) I do. (laughs) And uh, she believes that it's terrorizing her family. It's just Mm -hmm. not the reason for the breakup. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she tells the story about how a time that a family photo fell on the floor. It was sitting on the mantle and it just fell on the floor. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the camera goes to, it shows two framed photographs. And one of them is the three daughters. And the other one is the is a couple behind them. And you can see the, the daughters are in focus and the couple is out yep, of focus. Blurry. And then yep. they, they merge it. And so then you can see the couple and they blur the daughters. Yep. Okay. And I look see at it. how how he did look at one point. Yeah. Super young. Yeah. And granted, this picture probably is 26 years old. Mm-hmm. But she actually looks younger now than she did oh. back then. And he's still. I mean, maybe being divorced was good for her or being separated (laughs) is good for her. Maybe. So anyway, uh, the family picture fell on the floor and uh, Steve, once again, tries to blame the dogs. Mm -hmm. And she's like, the dogs are not to blame for everything. Okay. So then this is what Steve says next. No, I, you know, I hate to say this, but I mean, Larry's 60, right? Yes. He, he doesn't look good for his age. No, he looks more like 80. If he keeps going the way he's going, he's going to end up dying a very premature death. What's he doing? Larry. I know. We don't find out till the end. But Is Larry boozing? Mm-hmm. So she brings up something at this point that I found odd. Okay. He says she doesn't want their children to go through what she did. And then she tells about how her stepfather was murdered and they were very close. And I have no idea why she thinks Larry's going to get murdered. They skip right over this. They don't discuss it at all. Which, Steve, you're a homicide detective. (laughs) Like, maybe dive into that piece. You know what? He probably did and they cut it. He probably did. Yeah. That's the thing as I have to keep remembering. It's like, Mm -hmm. why didn't you? They probably did. They probably did. Yeah. Yeah. So we're back to Amy. She senses that someone here lost someone and isn't getting over it at all. And she said he didn't die here. He died far away, Mm -hmm. but recently, like in the 90s. And he's a good Mm -hmm. guy. He's Mm -hmm. trying to get away from here, but he can't. And she says there's an energetic cord formed between this dead man and the living living. person that Mm -hmm. he had a relationship with. And she's heard she's seen those before. A lot of spirits will form cords. Sometimes they're not good, though. No, I know. Well, in this one, I don't think that he formed it. I think Mm -hmm. she did. Oh, And um, she says she she sees the cord being pulled and the man at the end of it is screaming, no, no. She says it's not a happy situation. Mm -hmm. So maybe he wants to move on and he can't. Mm -hmm. It's funny. We don't think about that. We don't think about the living holding the spirits here. mm -hmm. Like we think about them staying. By Interesting. Choice. Yeah. yeah. It's not always by choice. And I never knew that until yeah. right now. Yeah. I guess I hadn't really thought of it either. Right. I just, yeah. Huh. So anyway, Steve is now meeting with Chelsea. That's the youngest daughter and she's 20. And she says while sleeping, she heard a whisper in her ear, like really close to her ear and her hair moved. Like it was breath that moved her hair. I know. Nope. I didn't, you know, I had the people whatever, mm-hmm. something's whispering in my ear before, but I never felt like they, I never felt a, their presence. I just heard mm-hmm. their voices, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that would have freaked me out. Um, she said it woke her up. And then Steve said, asked her if she could have been dreaming. And she says she wasn't, 
but she was asleep. So I don't know. She's probably doing one of those half in, half out mm -hmm. phases, you know? Mm -hmm. And then she uh, tells Steve that she's getting phantom bruises and they're showing up on her inner thighs and the back of her arms. Don't like that. And Steve brings up the dogs again. <laughs> God, these poor dogs. The dogs are in the corner. Like, what the fuck like, did I do, do to shit. you? They're like, um, I'm just here chasing my tail and licking my balls. That's <laughs> all I'm doing. <laughs> and they never showed the dogs, so I don't even know. Like, right. how did they? Did they have 500 dogs? I mean, <laughs> how many dogs did they have? They're like little Yorkies or Chihuahuas <laughs> or something. <laughs> I can't even reach the mantle. <laughs> Uh, poodles. I would I love to know. know what kind of dogs they had. Yeah. Larry, tell us. <laughs> so Chelsea has dreams of her family being murdered. Mm. And she also has the dreams where she sees her sister, Brittany, hanging mm. herself in the bathroom, in the shower. Oh, my God. Yeah. And in the dream, Brittany tells her this is something she just has to let her do. And she says, Brittany's never been like this. It's really odd for her to have that dream. Brittany's not suicidal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she it's freaked her out so much that she doesn't sleep in her room anymore. She sleeps in her mom's room, in the mm -hmm. master with mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. So now Amy is in Chelsea's room. Mm -hmm. She sees a dead woman who was murdered. This woman comes through the wall and is trying oh. to reach whoever is in the bed. I and hate it when they come I, through the wall. I know. That's creepy. Use the door. Use the door like everybody else. Be a polite spirit. <laughs> Come on. So Amy says she keeps hearing the, the dead woman saying, help me, mm -hmm. and is trying to get to the person through her dreams. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. And mm -hmm. she can get physical. I want to get not the physical. Dogs. Physical. <laughs> yeah, not the Are you sure it's not the dogs causing <laughs> you to dream this? <laughs> the it's always the just, dogs. Hold the little sands where they just hold paws. <laughs> They're touching their paws around the table. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh my god! I'm sorry. I'm in I'm a just, weird mood. I'm just looking for my dogs. I don't know where they are. <laughs> Probably trying to fucking cause you to have dreams. <laughs> having a seance in the back. Fozzy, damn oh, it, that Fozzy. Foz, he's a troublemaker. He is. <laughs> Poor blind boy. <laughs> That's what he wants you to think. Yeah, right. Who knows what he sees? He that's, probably sees shit I don't. That's his cover for the real shenanigans. Mm -hmm. All right. So now Steve is talking to the oldest daughter, Brittany, and she has seen a big shadow in her room. It's almost so touching the ceiling. All the girls still live there? Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, she admits that she has anxiety. She doesn't sleep well because her mind races. She says she's thinking of everything and nothing at the same time. Oh, girl! And I'm like, I know how that is. <laughs> she gets some. She gets some medication for that. Yeah, some CBD gummies and a podcast that puts you to sleep. She says that whatever's here brings out the worst in people. Mm -hmm. So now Amy is in Brittany's room, and she says, "For the living and the dead, this is just a terrible place." The room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The yeah, the Britney's room. Britney's room. Yep, the whole room is filled with depression. Mm -hmm. The whole room is filled with a black goop. Ooh, not goop. It's literally coming out of the walls. Ugh. So Matt asks her what it is, and she says it's a collection of negative thoughts, feelings, and emotions that are pushed out of a living person. Mm -hmm. And this kind of negativity can cause mental or physical illnesses, and can cause people to act irrationally. Mm -hmm. Like hanging themselves, for example. Yes. <clears throat> do you have to do that in here? Speaking of licking balls. Damn it, Greg. Just oh. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> oh, man. I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. Oh, and mystery solved. He is grilling. So now Steve is talking to Ashley. That's the middle daughter. Mm -hmm. And the first thing we hear Steve say is, so you're the one who broke your dad's leg, right? Shots fired, Steve. <laughs> like, nice intro. He probably wow. talked to her for 20 minutes before that. But yeah. of course, the way they edit right. it, that's what we hear. Hi, I'm Steve. So uh, you <laughs> broke your father's leg. <laughs> Were you boozing? <laughs> So he tells her that her dad doesn't blame her and that he blames the paranormal. 
he asked if she agrees. And her answer was, well, he was acting pretty weird that day. And I'm like, uh, honey, I think he might do that. <laughs> not, not <Larry." laughs> She's like, yeah, no, he was weird. I was in my complete right mind when I kicked the shit out of his leg. Exactly. He was crazy. Yep. So she does believe the family's in danger. And now this fight's really yucky. Ashley talks about one of her experiences. She said it was the night her boyfriend proposed. She came home alone, got in bed. And when she woke up, her pajama pants were off and they were sitting on her pillow and she had bruises on her thighs. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Could it have been the dogs? I mean, why oh, not? Oh my God, Ashley. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Is that icky? So, and this was the same night that she had the blow up with her dad. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if the blow up with dad happened after this mm-hmm. or if like the fight happened and then she went to bed. Mm-hmm. She didn't mention mm-hmm. what the order was and she didn't even mention that they happened at the same time until later. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember when she brought it up. Maybe even mom maybe brought it up. Is it the reveal? I think it might've been at the reveal. She wasn't at the reveal though, but mom okay. was. And I think mom, I think mom like mentioned that it was the same okay. night. Greetings friends. Do you have a taste for the unknown? Are your days plagued with thoughts of the strange and morbid? Has your bloodlust for knowledge of the most sadistic killers that has ever walked the earth ever been satisfied? If not, then I'm here to help. Welcome to the Nightcap, where nothing is taboo and the topics are always fresh. Join me by the fire on the first of every month for tales of terror and stories of the sadistic. Learn why your neighbor might be hiding a horrible secret or if that conspiracy theory you thought was false turned out to be real. Whatever your dark desire, I have what you need. You can find me on Spotify, Radio Public, and Anchor with more ways to listen coming soon. Without further ado, be safe, stay curious, and now, back to your program. But anyway, okay, so now Steve goes into town, and he says, it's like, it's like, <laughs> I was imitating driving. She was driving. Didn't know. That's how he gets around town. Ring shot. Yep, ring shot. So he says this town's like Mayberry. I don't know why he, <laughs> I don't know why he said that, but I wrote it down because I thought it was funny. Um, so he talks to Rebecca Taylor, who is a genealogist. A genealogist, <laughs> not, not a gynecologist. A gynecologist. <laughs> <laughs> We're so having she, too much fun. This I is. So she tells him that the original landowner, Thomas Shannon, purchased 1,100 acres in 1882, and it was a farm. Mm -hmm. She says that three of his children and his wife died on the property all in a short amount of time. Mm, Well, I did some digging. Digging through the archives. Digging through the archives. Digging through the archives. And I found his grave. And according to his tombstone, he went by TJ. His name Mm -hmm. was Thomas J. He went Mm -hmm. by TJ. He had a child who died in 1875, the same year she was born. Oh, and no. I know. And I found her little um, oh. gravestone. Her name was Minky. Stop. Isn't that cute? Her grave says she was five months and two days old. It says that right on the grave. Mm-hmm. Then another child, Laura, died at about a year and a half, but not until 1890. So that was 15 years later. And then his wife died in 1892. So two years after the two-year-old died or the one and a half year old and she was 50 which means that she had that baby laura when she was 48 years old which seems awfully old to have a baby back in the 1800s you know i mean it seems awfully old to be alive back i was gonna say you're nearly on your deathbed by the time you're 48 i think but anyway i did not find a third child but i so there was another child of theirs that died but she died like many, many years later, like in the forties or something. Mm-hmm. So that's that. I don't know. I couldn't find out any mm-hmm. more about those kids, but anyway, so Thomas also died on the property in 1906. His cause of death was exhaustion. Mm-hmm. And then I, it showed the 
the death certificate. So of course I paused and zoomed mm-hmm. in. And it says that um, his contributory cause was an abscess that he had for a year and a half. Hmm. I don't know what kind of abscess. I don't know where it was, but. I wonder if it was maybe a tumor that they thought was an abscess. Maybe. Yeah. I yeah, don't know. Could have been a doctor. So yeah. I have no clue. And they, you know, died of exhaustion. I, I guess. <clears throat> so his grandson ended up with the property, inherited the farm at some point. Uh, his name was Shannon Jones, mm-hmm. and this was in 1922. Shannon couldn't make it work either, and he sold it. Mm-hmm. He died of a heart attack in 1948 at 55 years old. And uh, so they said he worked himself to death. Oh, and I found a newspaper article that said that two months before his death, he'd had there had been a fire at the mm-hmm. place where he his his business. And it destroyed three hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of cotton, which so they must have been cotton farmers. Not the cotton. <laughs> so, oh my god, um, that's a lot. Yeah, especially back then. Oh yeah. I mean, oh that's a god. lot now, but can you imagine with inflation? Yeah. That was probably well over like five million dollars. Yeah. Oh yeah, probably. Math. I should have my calculator up, but I don't. So now we're back to Amy. She sees an angry man in his thirties or forties, and this is between nineteen thirty and nineteen fifty. Remember, Mm -hmm. Shannon died in 1948. Mm -hmm. He was out there on the land. And she said there was nothing here but dirt. And he was Mm -hmm. freaking the fuck out. She sees a bank and a bunch of paperwork on a desk and said that someone is stamping all the papers with bank. Bank. Uh Bank. Oh, like maybe the bank owns the land now? Yeah, I think that. Foreclosure? Foreclosure, I think so. She said something about him having money because he's got money, but I don't know. Maybe he sold it. Maybe it burned. Maybe his money was all tied up in that cotton. Yeah, it could have been. It could have been. So, and I'm wondering if it was all dirt because of the fire. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, he sold the land in 1922, I think. Oh. Unless I got that wrong. Maybe, maybe 1922 is when he had it. No, it says he sold it off in 1922. Huh. And then he died in 1948. At any rate, he sold it, but he still. Worked, worked it? it, yeah. He could have, sure, sure, yeah. So, um, the fire was never mentioned in the TV show, that's just an article I found. Uh, so anyway, Steve is at the Dallas Public Library, he learns about a case that he thinks might be important. So, he meets with a local woman who knows this case, and her name a historian. No, she's just a oh. local lady that I don't know, oh. she, maybe she's like maybe- the town gossip. I don't know, yeah. If she is, I want to meet her. I know, she's probably she got seemed- the tea. I know. She seemed pretty cool. So her name is Nita Ann. Ooh. I know. She tells Steve the whole story about this guy named Charles Ice. He was one of the property owners. He bought Mm -hmm. it in 1953. He had a wife named Opal. And if you look at the pictures. Yeah, I did see them. Okay. That's Charlie and Opal. And then. Oh, very, very like 50s looking woman. Very 50s. And. So apparently Charlie had been having an affair with a woman named Mary. She's Charlie. also in the pictures. Yep, I see her. You yep. talk. So Nita then pulls out a birth certificate and tells Steve that Charlie and Mary had a love child <gasps> in 1953. And you can see the um, birth certificate and his name is listed as the father. The mother is listed as Mary Louise Winkler and she's 20 years old. And he was 40 something. I can't remember how old he was. Love child. Love child. So what confused me about this was that um, the informant, which is the on the death certificate or birth certificate, mm-hmm. it's the person who is like asking to have it be filled out. Mm-hmm. And her name was Mary, Mrs. Mary Louise Younger Ice. So the mother of this yeah. baby, her name is Mary Louise <clears throat> Winkler. This person's name is Mary Louise Younger Ice. Maybe they changed her last name so they couldn't link it to her. I mean, I know that's a loose, you know, how un- children not a wedlock and all yeah. that. Well, and when I first looked at it, I was like, oh, wait, that's her. But. But hmm. I don't know where the name Younger comes from. Right. And so then I'm thinking, oh, maybe it's 
and it's a missus. So it's not uh-huh. somebody who's like, it wouldn't be Charlie's sister right, because it's somebody right. who's a missus and her last name is Ice. So I have no idea who that is, hmm. but I wouldn't think that Mary Louise would be such a common name that you'd have two in the same family. I don't but know. Maybe. <clears throat> Especially when one of them is on his side and mm-hmm. the other one is her. Mm-hmm. She's not related to them yet. Right. Anyway. Right. Anywho, Opal got sick in 1968 and he employed Mary to take care of Opal. She became her caretaker. She and the love child moved in with them. Oh my God. Right under, under Opal's nose. Yep, yep. I wonder if she knew. I hope she did it because if she did, that is like. That's an ultimate that's fuck a, you. Yeah. That's yep. like a, I don't care that you're sick. I'm moving. Oh my God. My yep. mistress and love child. In. Right. He sounds like a weenie. No, language. (laughs) So Opal died in 1968, right after she got sick, at the age of 58 from a blood clot in her lung. And just three weeks later, Charlie married caretaker (laughs) Mary. Do we know that he could have poisoned her? Why not? Or Mary could have. I mean, that is more of a woman's thing. But but I would would have guessed Mary over him. Right. Because, you know, she's in her position. She's in her way. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. very possible. So Nita hands Steve a death certificate and says it's Opal's. But I paused and looked and it wasn't Opal's. It was Charlie's. Charlie's. It's dated 1975. So I assume this is just a mistake in editing. Mm-hmm. But so Charlie and Mary were married for seven years until he died in 1975. He was 66. Uh, cause of death is, uh, it, says it's a, <laughs> it says it's a sudden death cause mm-hmm. unknown and then you know how on sometimes on the death certificates it'll say like how long somebody suffered from whatever it was that they had mm-hmm. so for that the length of time was 15 minutes <laughs> and All then right. it said uh, i guess a secondary cause presumed arteriosclerotic heart disease mm-hmm. length so heart 15 attack. years Ooh. Heart attack. he also had diabetes mellitus and a mass in his colon not a mass. A mass. So Nita says that Mary had quite a temper. She was Ooh. even violent. Oh, cool. So she could have poisoned Opal. So that does give some credence to your theory. Mm-hmm. Especially if she died so soon after she moved in. Yep. 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 Within a year. And she was her caretaker. Mm-hmm. So she had all Administering the medication. To her food. Yep. Her medication. Her yep. sustenance. Yeah. It's a little rat poison. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Arsenic. So Mary died in 2013 of Alzheimer's. She was 80. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find any obit or anything about her, mm-hmm. but I do wonder if this was the violent, abusive woman that Amy was seeing. Maybe. Might I said, I, I don't know if it was, she yep, was seeing yep. Ashley and her dad. Or or the, if she was seeing, yep. Yep. So now um, I think Amy is in the other house at this point. And it shows her entering one of the homes, but they look identical, so I couldn't tell mm-hmm. which one she was going to. Mm-hmm. She's getting a female, and she's hearing mother and grandmother. Okay. She thinks it could be someone who lived here recently and died here, and she's thinking they are in their late 30s to early 50s. Okay. This person is scary. They're extremely abusive. There's a physical illness, though, that is involving their head. So I'm wondering if that's um, if that's Mary and her Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. Maybe, but, yeah. You know, Mary would have had to come back and is showing herself yeah. younger, but with her mental mm-hmm. capacity. I don't know. I'm grasping at straws. So Steve has gotten wind of another story in the area. <laughs> this is the last one. A young school teacher was murdered and found by the side of the road near the property. So he meets with Sheriff David Burns mm-hmm. um, from the Talking Heads. That's David Byrne. Anyway. Um, is, oh, my God. Because that just cued. So the Crash Test Dummies, which is a Canadian band like yeah. from the 90s, yeah, they right. have a song where they talk about David Byrne. And I have no idea who it was. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's not the sheriff from Coffin, no. Texas. No. No, they were talking about. Um, the Talking yeah. Heads guy. David Byrne. Yeah. Huh. I wonder if he's Canadian. Uh, no, he's British. Oh, okay. 
But anyways, the um, Crash Test Dummies were one of my favorite bands back in the day. I have a CD of theirs, Mm -hmm. um, an album. I don't know if they released more than one, but they had at least two. This one is the one that has the mm, mm, Mm -hmm. song. Oh, they have one song in there called The Psychic that I absolutely love. I'll have to pull that out again. I haven't listened to that album in a long time, but that's, I think this is the first band that you and I have really liked that because we have such (laughs) different tastes in music. Yeah. 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 Anyway, sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just let us in like a five minute tangent. So. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so we're talking about David Burns. Sure. Yes. So we're talking to David Burns. Member of the Talking Heads. Yeah. So he says the woman named Linda Jane Phillips, she was 26 years old. She was living and teaching in Dallas, but she spent summers in Kaufman with her parents. On August 7th, 1970, she was at a wedding in Dallas and she called her parents and told them she wasn't coming home that night and would be mm. staying with a friend. And she never came home. Her car was found two days later, and her body was found shortly after the car was found within a day. Mm -hmm. She had been mutilated and had 26 stab wounds, mostly to her neck and abdomen. And he shows Steve the death certificate, which notes lacerations of the neck and abdomen. Mm -hmm. And he says that the autopsy revealed that she had been sexually assaulted as well. So this person knew her because that is a rage. That is, that's rage right there. It does sound like it. Yeah. I mean, you don't, you know, you stab someone once or twice to kill them, but if you're pissed. Yeah. I mean, so I, I don't know. I'm, I'd like hy- to know more about hypothesizing. I'd like to know mo- more about her boyfriend. Mm-hmm. But anyway, the col- the case was cold for 14 years oh, God. until in 1984, serial killer Henry Lee Lucas confessed to killing her. Do you know mm-hmm. who he is? The name, is he part, was he a homosexual serial killer with? I don't think so. The name sounds familiar. I don't Tell think me so. About him. There's a Netflix movie or series, I guess it is, about him called mm-hmm. The Confession Killer. So he got brought in for a murder mm-hmm. and he confessed to it or they realized that he had done it. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, well. I guess I'm going down anyway. So right. that, and they were treating him like a king while he's there. They're giving him milkshakes and they're giving him food and he's on TV and he's loving it. Well, I guess they do that to, to get, get him more to talk. inspiration out of him. Yeah. So he ended up mm-hmm. confessing to everything they put in front of him. Mm-hmm. He ended up confessing to over 3000 murders because he liked the attention and the milkshakes. Of course he did. Yep. And he obviously didn't kill all of those right. people. But he confessed to killing this woman. Um, her name again was Linda. Mary. No, Linda. Linda, Linda, Linda. Linda Jane Phillips. Oh, my God. So he, but the, the law enforcement at the time believed that Lucas was the killer. Current sheriff does not. Mm-hmm. In his mind, it's still unsolved. So the only proof they have that he was the killer is he confessed? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. believe him either. Yeah. Well, he knew stuff about the murder that they thought only somebody who was there would know. Oh. But then someone else said, but all that shit was in the paper. So, oh, and it was okay. in 14 years, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's not like they picked him up the next morning. Right. It had, the people had been talking about this case for 14 years. And you don't know, maybe he was researching cases to claim. Yeah. Yeah. He could have been. Although I don't know if he was that smart. I might have been thinking of another Henry. There's anyways, moving on. Well, the Velisca had a Henry with three names. Do you remember? Um, I'm not even going to ask if you remember. You know the Adam Walsh case? Yeah. I feel like there was a, a Henry was partnered with that man who, who claimed to have killed him. I can't remember his oh. name. I feel like it's like Otto or some very German name. <clears throat> huh. I don't know. Let me see. I just, I need to know. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Adam. We can take a break. Sorry. That's right. That way we won't have people yelling. Yeah. It's blah, blah, blah. So this guy came forward like thir- like a bunch of years later. Tool. Tool, tool, tool. Okay. O- Otis Tool. Otis Tool. Mm. I feel like he was with somebody though. Otis Tool partner. Henry Lee Lucas, yes. It was. Yep. Oh, In look 19- at that. Yes, okay. Yep, they soon developed a sexual relationship. Okay. Wow. wow, because he said, not that he couldn't be bisexual, or I know rape is right. not, not about sex anyway, but he said that he killed her because <clears throat> he wanted to have sex with her. 
And That's what he told them. According to Wikipedia, Henry Lee Lucas was married to a woman for two years from 75 oh. to 77. But again, not saying he can't be gay. It right. was the 70s. You know, maybe he didn't feel comfortable coming out. Yeah. Well, but- look at John Wayne Gacy, who mm-hmm. was married twice to a woman mm-hmm. and still fucked a lot of guys and yeah. killed a lot of guys. Yeah. Um, we just can I just that. say I'm very proud of myself for making that connection. Yeah, I'm actually I'm pretty proud too because you always say your memory is shit, but that it, was good. Yes, really that Thank was you. good. I'm glad we have this recorded. <laughs> <laughs> Big day. So, anyways, Henry Lee Lucas <laughs> is confessing to yeah, so he confessed to, to Linda's the, murder to Linda's murder, but the sheriff, uh, the current David sheriff, Burns doesn't doesn't yeah. believe it exactly. Yep, which I kind of see his point. I do too. Confessing to like three thousand murders. Right. Right. Yeah, I think I think I'd want to look at the boyfriend. How would you even? You would have to commit a hundred murders a year for ten years to get to three thousand murders. I mean, that could be done. I know, but how, I feel like it could. But also, well, I guess in the seventies, that was kind of the serial killer era. Yeah, they didn't have the DNA that they did now. It would, yeah. you know, and if you're moving around the country, you wouldn't be able to connect it you know, the way that they do now. Yep. Anyways, I'm sorry. Another tangent. I took this on. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. So we're now we're at Amy. So remember mm-hmm. the, the murdered woman that Amy saw in Chelsea's room? Yes. The one asking for help. Well, is that Linda? Amy's talking about her and she says she's getting the name Linda or Lily or Lily. She was between the ages of 25 and 35. Linda was 26. Mm-hmm. She's very small, super thin. And she says she's all kinds of scared and pissed. I think this woman may have visited Amy ahead of time because she appeared to be reading from her notes as mm. opposed to feeling it right then. Yep. So I think yep. that, that Amy, that the lady came to her before and in yep. the house too. But when I think she was in her meditative opening state. Up. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. So she said the dead woman is really wrapped mm-hmm. up in how she died. And she said <clears> it was somewhere in Texas mm-hmm. and she was wearing a really pretty dress. So, and she was going to the wedding. She had been at a party. Yep. yep. Wedding party. So yep. Amy says the boyfriend came in and then two big men came in, took her, threw her in a car, one beat the shit out of her. And then she says, there's also sexual stuff happening. Mm. And then Amy says that she, the victim, can see her arm being cut off. And Amy gestures that it's her left arm being cut off. And Matt asks with what? And she says she thinks it's a knife. And then she says they um, they did something here, too. And she's gesturing to her stomach. And she says, like, they cut it open or something. And then the woman passed out. And then they did something to her head or neck or something. And I did look at an article about when they found Linda's body and she was almost decapitated. It was Jesus her neck was cut so bad. So Amy says they then scattered her body all over all along the road. And that's not so exactly they, what happened to Linda. Okay. Um, but it sure is close. So they cut her up then. Yeah. Jesus. That's sadistic. I know. Mm-mm. I know. So now we're at the reveal. And it is Larry, Denise, so husband and wife, and then Brittany. She's the oldest daughter. Okay. Yep. Steve explains to Amy that Larry thinks the paranormal is breaking up his family. Amy talks about the murdered woman she connected with in Chelsea's room, the youngest daughter. And remember how Chelsea said the woman spoke in her ear. Yep. And she said she saw her trying to make contact through the living person's dreams. Mm -hmm. She tries to get physical, smacking them and trying to wake them up. And also constantly whispering or yelling, help me. Steve shows the photo of Chelsea's leg and the bruises that she wakes up and they tell Amy about the dream she has about the family being murdered. So I wondered if this is what Denise is alluding to in the beginning when she says she doesn't want her kids to go through what she did, but mm-hmm. their stepfather being murdered. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find any other yeah. connection. Maybe. That yeah. seems solid to me. Yeah. So Amy explains that dead people are coming to Chelsea for help. So she's most likely a physical uh, medium. Medium. Yep. Mm-hmm. And Steve asks who this was in life, and she tells him she got the name Linda or Lily, and about how she was murdered. And she basically describes what she did for us, you know, in that in her portion. And basically, mm-hmm. it's just what happened to Linda. Yeah, yeah. Steve talked about Linda, showed her the photo, and said, "Is this who you saw?" And she said, yeah, "She's pretty sure that's who mm-hmm. it was." Mm-hmm. She then talks about the elderly male. He's active in both houses. She calls him the lurker because mm-hmm. he's always behind you. 
Mm-hmm. He doesn't like to be seen, but mm-hmm. if he is, it's usually a dark shadow. Mm-hmm. He's attached to somebody in the master bedroom. He's obsessed. He sits on the bed and caresses the person's face. Gross. And Denise says, Chelsea has seen a man sitting at the bed because, you know, Chelsea sleeps in her sleeps mom's room. Sleeps with her. Now. Yep. Yep. Well, in the mom's room. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Brittany tells a story about how Ashley woke up and her pajama pants were off. And Amy says, this is this guy doing it. And she goes, he's a little more appropriate than I thought. Inappropriate, you mean? Inappropriate. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my God. A little more inappropriate than she thought. Yeah. So Amy talks about the other deceased male who died far away, the one with the cord. Mm-hmm. This is Denise's dad. She is inadvertently trapping him here because she won't let go. Oh, and it's tough. they've never caught his murderer. So yes. Denise breaks down. She says she was afraid. I was afraid this was going to come up. Amy explains that her wanting justice for his murder, I guess it's unsolved, but they never talked about that before this. Mm-hmm. But that could be what's keeping him tethered here. Mm-hmm. Denise <clears> asks, what am I supposed to do? I, you know, how do I let him go? I don't want him to, to live like there, not live like this. I don't yeah. want him to be Exist. like this. Like Exist. that. Yeah. yeah. And they show Amy just looking at her and then they cut to another scene. And I'm like, oh. Oh, wait, oh, gee, uh, mm. sure, 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 who, sure, sure. I don't know who edited this episode. This one, it's kind not, of bugging me. Out. Not doing a great job. That's champ. Kind of, kind of pissing me off. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they, they probably did go over it. Mm-hmm. either it never made it to camera or never made it to the final yeah i'm sure amy would i'm sure amy's not just hanging. gonna stare at somebody while they're You're asking like, well, her well that sucks anyways about <laughs> moving the right along <laughs> you gotta watch out for those damn dogs <laughs> <laughs> they are causing a ruckus <laughs> yep and bruises and pictures falling. pictures and just uh dreams and- right so Amy talks about something in Brittany's room. She was only in there for a couple of minutes because she felt physical pain. Mm-hmm. She said it's so bad the dead don't even go in there. Oof. And she sensed depression and sadness. And she said the living there, their brains would go 100 miles an hour. Like Brittany oh, said. Oh, like Brittany is. said. Yep. And she t- tells Amy she goes through that every night. The negative energy has collected on the walls and turned into a black goop. And it's coming from a psychic empath. And guess who that is? Brittany. It's Brittany. It's Brittany, bitch. It's Brittany, bitch. Oh, yeah. So Amy explains how its energy is spilling out of Brittany and it creates negative thoughts and patterns causing irrational behavior. Steve then asks about how Ashley broke Larry's leg. It was during the argument about her fiance the night he proposed. Larry pipes up and said, it's like something is trying to get the men out of the house so it can have their way with the women. They showed Denise and she's like, oh boy, not this yeah. again. Yeah. So Amy asks if they've been to counseling and they say, yeah, we went three times. And Amy goes, three sessions? You only went to three sessions? And this is where shit gets real. Ooh. Denise says that Larry told her that no matter what they do, he's going to keep on drinking. There it is. There it is. There it is. And Denise says, as soon as he said that, I was like, I'm out. I'm done. Mm-hmm. 26 years down the tubes. Mm-hmm. And she says, you are killing yourself, plain mm-hmm. and simple. Mm-hmm. This is Amy mm-hmm. giving Larry the what for. Your drinking broke up the marriage because she loves you and she doesn't want you to die. So yes. you need to get help for that if you want your family back. And then Steve says. Man the f*** up and knock it off. That's simple. Boom, Steve. Exactly. Man the fuck up and knock this shit off. Or accept that she's left you and drink yourself to yeah. death. Go ahead and drink drink yourself Don't to death. Don't blame it on anybody but yourself. Exactly. Don't blame the dogs. Right. So um, I think I forgot to say when she showed the sketch. I thought it was later, but she must have already shown it now. But have you looked at it? The yeah, sketch? it is fucking yeah. creepy. It's like, yeah, it's that like must a hallway. Be Brittany's room. Yeah. It is. It's right outside Brittany's room. So it's mm-hmm. a hallway and then the door and you see all this black blues, yeah. sludge yep. sliding down the walls. Yeah, yep. it's really gross. So she does say, Amy does say that the black goop is making Larry's condition worse. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's when she pulls out the sketch. Mm-hmm. She explains that Brittany collects emotions and it's spilling out all over the house. And of course, mm-hmm. Brittany feels terrible. She's crying like it's her fault. It's it's not. It's she not. just didn't know. So Amy says there's family issues and there's paranormal and they do go hand in hand sometimes. 
So for the dead, they need to get a medium out there to move the dead on. She suggested a special reading from a medium for Denise and her stepfather to mm-hmm. try and sever that, let him go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then uh, she tells Brittany she needs to start journaling every night. And she mm-hmm. gave her some herbs and crystals to put in a bath to mm-hmm. cleanse her. And with Chelsea, she says at least one time per week, she needs to let the dead people contact her. If she doesn't, they will slam her and they will mm-hmm. slam her hard. Mm-hmm. So she needs to set boundaries with them, but mm-hmm. she does have to allow them to talk to her. Yep. So kind of like meditate almost. Yeah, I guess. She wants, Amy wants the whole family to go to counseling. She mm-hmm. says this is extremely important. And she says, I think it will lead you on a very interesting path. And I'm like, Mm. Ooh, no, what she did that. What does she mean by that? Amy, you scamp with your I, words. I know. And then Larry finally fucking admits that he has to stop blaming everyone else and look at himself. Do you think, Larry? Come on, Larry. So the end thing, they are searching for a medium and a family counselor and the activity continues. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how long they waited to contact mm-hmm. him and find out, but... Mm-hmm. I hope they, I hope they did something by now. I tried to find, I couldn't find this family. They don't have their last names, you know, so I couldn't Mm -hmm. tell what happened with them or even if they're still living there or if he's even still alive or, Mm -hmm. yeah. And I wanted to find out who her stepfather was, who was murdered. I couldn't find that either. The Activity Continues podcast is produced by me, Amy, at Collected Sounds Media and is a part of the independent Collected Sounds podcast network. Nailed it.